Hello guys, welcome to Synths and Sounds. As you can see, I'm not in my usual studio. Actually, I took a couple of days off to go to the mountains with my friends to have some time just to record music. But what my friends don't know is that it actually was all a plan for me to finally reunite with the Beringer Neutron. I had a hot affair with her a couple of months ago. Maybe you saw the video on my channel. And, well, finally I managed to get my friend to bring his Neutron with him for me to finally have some fun with it again. But it leaves me kind of conflicted because in the meantime I got a Mo grandmother. So now I need to spend time with both of those beauties. So why not take a few patch cables and patch them up? Well, that's what I did. I had a hot threesome with both of them at the same time. So when you use both of them at the same time, you can really get some really cool sounds and you can really open up the opportunities you get with just a neutron or just a grandmother. So let's have a listen to what cool things you can do with both of them at the same time. So let's start off by adding more oscillators to the grandmother. We all have seen the Moog matriarch and we all wish to have more oscillators because more oscillators are just cool. So we can easily get the neutrons oscillators to play with the grandmother. Um, for this we can use this handy mixer. Um, in most situations you don't need the noise, so you can take the channel of the noise for something else. In this case we want to take oscillator 1 and 2 from the neutron to get it into the mixer together with the two oscillators of the grandmother. So to do so it's one of the easiest patches. We take the keyboard out from the grandmother to the oscillator 1 and 2 in of the neutron and then we take the oscillator mix out to send it into the noise in of the mixer. And now if I play it you can hear we have all the different oscillators on all the different mixer knobs. As you can hear, the Neutron, although being in middle position, is not really in tune with uh, the oscillators of the grandmother, which is due to the kind of weird uh, MIDI setting of the Neutron. It will always take the last note it has received via MIDI to be the base note of the sound and what comes from this keyboard control voltage will always add to that underlying note. So to get it in sync you need to make sure that you're gonna play a C note on the Neutron first via MIDI so then it will be routed to a chord directly. So once I give the input to the Neutron we now have the oscillators kind of in tune. So we can hear there's some phase cancelling going on, but uh, that's kind of logical if you add more and more oscillators. Right now it's just one oscillator of the neutron, so by adjusting the mix we can make two oscillators from the neutron going here. Let's maybe set this one an octave higher, this one an octave lower. So um, now these are on 8 inch. These this one is on 16 inch, this is on 4 inch, so we should get a really cool wide sound with a lot of unison. Let's have a listen.
We can also set them all to 8 inch to get one very, very loud unison note. Let's have a listen. So one thing where the grandmother is kind of limited is on the side of envelopes because you only get one and with a second envelope you can create some really interesting sounds. So um, we have the neutron so let's add a second envelope to a sound of the grandmother. For that we will have to trigger the neutrons envelope which we use the gate out of the grandmother to send it to the gate in for envelope 2 in this case. Then we will need the signal of envelope 2 and since we don't want it directly to affect the cutoff we will use the attenuator and it's really nice because then for the grandmother's envelope you have this one to choose the envelope amount and to affect the cutoff again is the second envelope which you can control via this attenuator so you really have the same function next to each other. So now here we have a very short plucky sound with a short attack rather short decay and no sustain while on the neutron we have set a pretty high attack level a pretty long decay and a, a little bit of sustain so the neutron's envelope will kick in much slower and you will get this kind of second bounce within the sound which sounds pretty cool. Both the neutron and the grandmother leave you a little bit limited on the side of modulation because for the grandmother you only get this one LFO same as for the neutron where you only get one but having two LFOs for example to modulate each other is a really cool feature. Um, I want to create a kind of wobbly sound by adding a sign shaped LFO to the filter. You can hear that quite easily once I patch in the LFO to the cutoff in and I play a note. But it is kind of static and not too interesting. But what if we select a sawtooth LFO to modulate another LFO? At that point it becomes really interesting. So let's do that. I take the LFO first to the attenuator and then from there I take it to the LFO rate of my second LFO. Then we want that to modulate the filter but once again you get more freedom in creation if you integrate another attenuator so you can select how much you want the LFO of the neutron to influence the filter. So for that we take the LFO output, we send it to attenuator 2 in and then we get out of the attenuator 2 to the grandmother's cutoff in. So now the rate of this LFO will be affected by this LFO's rate. We can hear that quite easily.
So now we want this nice effect always to occur when we start hitting a key. So for that all we need is one more cable to say that the gate we play on our keyboard should be used as a synchronization for the LFO. So now let me just turn this down a bit and we can hear the LFO modulating, LFO modulating cutoff sound. For my last patch, I wanted to create a really fat bass line, this kind of dubstep, wobbly bass, but with a little twist. So um, first of all, I wanted to create a really fat bass line, which means bringing in more oscillators is always nice. In this case, I take the LFO, which you probably know already, which can be used as a third uh, oscillator on the grandmother. This is quite easy by taking the keyboard out to the rate in. Then you need to tune the LFO, which I have already done. And then you take the wave out and send it to the noise in. So now what was the noise regulator before uh, now is the mixer for the third oscillator. Now we want to give it a certain wobble and we would do that usually with the LFO, which is now used already. Um, so for this we're gonna bring in the neutron in a kind of special way. So far the sound sounds like this. Now let's bring in the LFO which can be done by taking the LFO out and we actually want to modulate the filter cutoff. But we don't want to do it directly. Um, what we want is regulated by a certain amount. So for this I'm using the attenuator tool of the neutron. So what we get comes out of the attenuator and the LFO will send its signal to attenuator 2. So now as we change the LFO tempo, we can now by selecting the attenuator adjust the amount of cutoff modulation. So now we have a kind of static LFO, but what I would like would be an LFO that changes. And to do a certain change into the LFO, we can use the envelope. Once again, we will not go directly with from the envelope to the LFO. We will again use another attenuator. This time I'm using the one from the grandmother and we will use it to control the LFO rate of the bearing a neutron. So now with this attenuator we can select how much of the envelope will be influencing the LFO tempo which means as it is 
set to a not very fast attack, the LFO will become slowly faster and then slower again as the envelope decays with a very slow decay down to a rather low sustain level. So all these things will now be influencing the neutrons LFO which then influences the filter cutoff. And what we get out of it is a pretty cool bass sound. Let's have a listen. So this is a really cool template to create very fat bass lines. We can now also play around with the octave shift of the single oscillators, for example, and adjust the amount of influence to the LFO and how much the LFO influences the filter by uh, playing around with the two attenuators, which we have now patched in. And also by changing uh, the envelope, we can obviously shift a lot of it. Uh, by the way, for this preset, I'm in keyboard release mode, so I don't want the envelope to influence the keyboard release, so we can get these very nice long basses. I hope you liked my patch ideas. Mainly I wanted to inspire you to take out your grandmother or bearing a neutron and get creative with the patch cables because you can really open up the opportunities and things you can do with a grandmother or a neutron once you start bringing on the patch area. But that's it for today. As always, leave a like if you like the video, leave a comment if you want to comment on anything and don't forget to subscribe for more synths and sounds. This was Jochen. Thanks for watching.